thought I'd make a video documenting a Twiggy Lisa booting from Lisa OS 1.2. This is uh, my Lisa that I've restored. Uh, it's at the bike shop in JP if you want to actually see it in person in Jamaica Plain, Boston. Um, and uh, I've got Lisa OS 1.2 installed on the five megabyte profile drive, which is up here. That's uh, Apple's first commercially available hard drive. Um, and I was able to install this system by making disks for Lisa 1.2, uh, actually making Twiggy disks using the BLU utility um, and by modifying high density floppies. So this was actually installed using the original drives. We're gonna go ahead and boot this up. Start with the profile hard drive. Notice a few things here. This is an original ESA uh, with the uh, Twiggy drives, which were a high density format that Apple um, released in 83 with, with the Lisa, introduced in 83 with the Lisa. It was supposed to be basically an in house alternative to um, the suppliers they have been using, the drives they've been using up to that point in the Apple III and the Apple II. And you can actually see in the um, keyboard, the slide outs here, let's see if we can find it. Yeah, the icons. Then if you have an original keyboard, you've got these wonderful Twiggy icons. And what's unique about the Twiggy disc is uh, that it uses, it has two slots for read heads, read and write heads. And that's because I used a variable speed motor and two heads to read off the disc, which is kind of a unique feature. It was also the thing that kind of killed the Lisa in terms of um, reliability. It was very unreliable. And uh, in the end, most of these were recalled. And so this is a fairly rare survivor. So now that the profile drive is booted, it says ready, and we can boot the Lisa. Just gonna wait for this to power on. And there's our startup testing. Many thanks to Tom Fricker, uh, who did an excellent job archiving some of these discs or making them available, uh, helping me deserialize them. That was also rather important for this process because Lisa Twiggy disks are, and all, all Lisa disks are serialized to the unit that they're installed on. It was a copy protection scheme. As you can see here, Lisa Office System 1.2. 1.2 was the last version that was available for the Twiggy Lisa. So this is also up to date, which is nice. My understanding is that 1.2 was basically a minor update that made it possible, or kind of, it took a, it basically addressed a, a minor bug in uh, Lisa OS that uh, made it impossible to run a Lisa Terminal, which I actually don't have a copy of yet. So if you have a Twiggy copy of Lisa Terminal and you're out there, um, I would love to have Lisa Terminal um, archived and I'd be glad to, uh, to have that. All right. So we're in Lisa OS. We're gonna go ahead and do a few things. Um, you know, I'll start by actually showing you that these drives work, so that's kind of a cool thing. We're gonna go ahead and put Lisa Graph in drive one. Here's the unique sound of a Twiggy drive. I'm not sure if you can hear that. You can kind of hear the variable speed motor. And there's Lisa Graph Master. And 
I can put that away. So set aside Lisa Graph Master. There's the Twiggy icon for Lisa Graph Master. This is how I put these programs on this computer. And then if I want to eject it, I simply press the button. It puts away the work that was on, done on the diskette. In this case, nothing. And pops it out. And we can test drive two. The same way. And there it is, Lisa Graph Master. You know, they say that these drives were unreliable. I'm not sure I've really experienced that here. They've been pretty good after a very minor, you know, maintenance. Um, that drive two is a little noisier than drive one. Uh, probably just needs a little more lube, but it, it does work just fine. Um, and we'll go ahead and show you some programs in Lisa OS. So let's show you the two things that are kind of most interesting. We'll do Lisa Write and Lisa Draw. So the way that, this pro that these programs work is you tear off a piece of stationary paper, in this case a Lisa Write paper document, and then you open it and the program opens. Now when the Lisa was released, the original intention was to have people boot the operating system off the disks, but they, that turned out to be kind of a, kind of, well, more, very slow. And so when the Apple released Lisa, they decided to release it with the drive um, and have it boot the operating system from the drive directly, rather than from the disks. All right, here it is. Very simple word processor. Um, say something like, hi. Um, I'm an original Lisa. Yeah, there you go. So not a whole lot going there. We can change the type style a little bit. Let's change it to a uh, pitch modern. Let's see what the font set changes a little bit. We can justify it, Sorry. center it, there it is. So you know, basic things that you can do in a simple word editor. So we'll go ahead and um, save and put away. I'm not going to keep this work. And let's uh, check out Lisa Draw. Let's use a Lisa Draw example. It's kind of fun. Mmm, spa plans. Lisa Draw would have been kind of one of the killer apps here. It's pretty cool. Uh, the uh, Lisa Calc and Lisa Project were also fairly important applications. I've heard that NASA uh, used uh, Lisa Project. I'm not sure if they used uh, Twiggy Lisas. They probably had the later version of Lisa. As you can see, this is not a zippy machine. It really does push the uh, 68,000 processor right to the limit. Give you a kind of side view here. Here's the 
Lisa one side of view. And here is a Lisa one the other side of view. And there you can see it. There's the spa plans. You know, so you can add, you can add your own shapes and whatnot to a drawing like that, or a circle. And we can fill things, shade it in with color, for example. So yeah, there was a lot you could do with something like this. As you can see, um, somebody might have uh, pulled together some blueprints, you know, um, or done some simple digital art. Actually cancel. Let's just save and put away. That save, and then I'm going to show you the preferences for the system. Let's junk that. Just try to keep this operating system clean. All right. Um, I just set this aside too. There we go. All right. Let's look at preferences. convenience settings. You can adjust the screen contrast, make it bright. Uh, we can change um, the, basically the, how long it takes for the screen to dim. Make it five to ten minutes. We can make it uh, dim level. And we'll adjust that so it dims out like that. It kind of gives you a sample of how dim it's going to make it. Yep. We've got the speaker volume. gets quite loud. Repeating keys and the mouse uh, double click rate. You can also go to startup and change which uh, disk drive it starts up from. And device connections, but not much. And that's kind of it for the Lisa, the Twiggy Lisa. Um, there are other programs I could show you. We're not gonna do that right now, but um, you know, as you can see under here, we've got list, we've got project, we've got calc. You know, the basic things like a basic calculator. This is the 1.2 calculator. I don't know if there's any difference between this and one. I haven't looked at it yet. It might have a scientific for the looks of it. Let's see. Actually, has some features, some decent features here. Yeah. Oh, and hey, you can change it to RPN. Where is that? I just saw that. Reverse Polish, nice, cool. All right, so that's that. And then when you're done, you set aside everything and you can press the power button to shut down. And here's what it looks like when Elisa shuts down. Kind of cool actually, it kind of dims the light, fades it out.
Like everything would be set, it takes a while. Then we just turn the drive on. That's it. Thanks for watching.